Okay, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for the first uh, edition of Hardware Stories of this year. We are having a series of recurring events where we explore hardware, design, and even futurism. I am Giovanni Salinas, Senior Product Development Engineer here at Supply Frame Design Lab. And, well, I think most of you know about the lab. I see a lot of familiar faces, which is really cool. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll just give you the very quick definition or um, description of the lab, I should say. This design lab is a fabrication facility, and we explore um, product development, mostly on electronics engineering. We work with um, social um, objectives, social causes, and we also partner with uh, educational institutions for developing projects and, and workshops. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight. So for our first talk, we have the fantastic Poyu and Andrew. They are going to be talking about um, e-ink related projects and I'll let them do the presentation. So thank you again and welcome. Hello. Um, so yes, uh, Poyu and I are going to be talking about on a project that we worked on together and collabor collaborated on. So it's an e-ink oblique strategies. And oblique strategies is quick background. It's a card deck that Brian Eno made in 1975 with Peter Schmidt. Uh, and it's supposed to, it's a deck of cards. I think it's like 130 so cards. Um, that e each have a saying on it uh, that help with creative blocks. So this originally came out in 1975. It's been reprinted a few times, mostly during the 80s, and I think like once during 2001, but it's been since out of print since then. So it's kind of hard to get your hands on. It's a little bit rare. You can find it on eBay, but it's really expensive now. And so I have a deck with me uh, that I can let people see after the talk, uh, but I got mine maybe like almost 10 years ago now, and I paid $80 for it, and um, I, I don't want to like finger through it anymore because I don't want to mess it up or anything like that. So some examples of what the cards are, you can see them here. So voice nagging suspicions, give way to your worst impulse, uh, remove specifics and convert to ambiguities, retrace your steps. So Sayings like that, uh, that help with creative blocks. So there's been a lot of different versions of oblique strategies that people have done themselves. So there's a web-based version that I, I know some friends use this. Um, here's an another example, do something boring. Um, but people have also made like a Slack plugin for this. Uh, balance the consistency principle with the inconsistency principle. You can get a different prompt every time. Uh, even a version for Game Boy. Uh, assemble some of the instruments in a group and treat the group. So you can see like it's a popular thing for hackers to, to make their own take on it. Uh, so here's some example listings of it on eBay. You can see it's not cheap anymore. Uh, there's no current print of it, so this is what this is what inspired me to make my own version of it. Is I didn't want to mess up my current version of the deck, so I wanted to make my own and have it kind of be my thing. And uh, not gonna lie, part of the inspiration for this was I wanted to do something with e ink. I think e ink is a really interesting, cool technology. It's low power when it's when it's not changing, it's not taking any power. Uh, it's easy to read, it's not like a screen. I'm staring at a screen all day, I don't want to stare at a screen more when I'm not working. It's also nice to have an automated version of this to where it'll display a new card for me every day without having to actually flip through the deck. And it also just looks nice. It, I, I like the, the look of e-ink versus uh, like a, a o OLED display or something like that. So I started the pr this project back in 2019. This is the first iteration of it. 
So you can see I'm using a solar panel at the top here, and this is sitting next to the original deck of cards, so it was about the, the same footprint in size. So when I started this project, I had two things in mind. I wanted to use, well, I guess three things. I wanted to use e-ink, I wanted to use solar panel, and I wanted it to be about the same size as the deck of cards, because I wanted it to be a replacement for it. So this is the current version. This is what it looks like now. You can see it looks different from what it was before. There's no solar panel from the front of the display. But if you look at the back, um, well, you can see another picture of the front here. Uh, always give yourself credit for having more than personality. And then on the back is a giant solar panel. Not giant, but yeah. Uh, and then this is it next to the actual deck of cards. And you can see it's about the same size and footprint. So I have it here, and if you're interested, you can see it after the talk as well. And you can see it here compared to the deck of cards. So in the actual project, this is what we used for components. So you can see the grayscale e-ink. We used uh, grayscale because the monochrome updates faster than uh, the tricolor or any, any that incorporate color in it. Uh, very consciously use the ESP32, and that's because of its memory size. Uh, something like an Arduino would be really easy to use, but it doesn't have the memory storage to actually store all the quotes on it. So that was a limiting factor. Uh, and the ESP32 is very powerful while being low, low energy. Um, the lithium ion battery we'll take a closer look at in a little bit. Uh, and then you can see the solar panel. Uh, and the battery recharger. And so for the list of components, it, to build the project, it's about $100 to make each one. So this is the battery that's, that's in this version. Uh, you can see it's pretty sizable for the application. So if we do some calculations, the ESP32, the dev board consumes about 100 microamps uh, per hour and then convert that to milliamps, divide that by the milliamps capacity of the battery. And this r could run about 2.5 years, but that's not wholly accurate because you're not taking into account when it wakes up and changes the card and then goes back to sleep. But 99.9% .9 of the time, it's running in that low power mode. So even if you cut this number in half, say it's a year, uh, it can run a long time without any sort of charge from the solar panel. So take into the, the consideration charging it from the solar panel, it can just run basically indefinitely. So I wanted to incorporate some sort of interaction into this. The way it works is it will update every 24 hours, and it's just a delay timer that will draw a new card after that. Um, but I wanted some sort of way that the, the user could get get a new card with it without having some sort of button or like interactive on the outside uh, of the case. And I also just kind of want to use mercury switches because I thought mercury switches are such a cool thing. <laughs> so I wanted an excuse to use this. Um, and then I found out that mercury switches are actually uh, not legal in California to order. So they're kind of hard to get your hands on. You can't just order it from Amazon or anything like that. So I ended up not being able to use mercury switches, ended up switching to a ball switch. So there's a ball switch in this to where if you invert it, it'll take a second and it'll display a new card. And so that's some way that I was able to incorporate some interaction to it without having a button or like some tactile thing. It's, it's for me, uh, I remember showing this project to a friend and they said it reminded them of like a magic eight ball where it, it has like, like that playful quality to it. And so this is the way that a ball switch works is there's this container and if you invert it, the metal ball will make contact with those two prongs and it's uh, wired directly to the reset of the ESP32 and it'll just reset that 24 hour timer. And so quick overall view of how the code works, what it does, wakes up, 
selects a quote from the array of quotes. Uh, right now there's currently about 180. Uh, the original deck of cards I think is maybe 160 quotes and in the original deck there's blank, card, blank cards included so that you can write your own, took inspiration for that and added a, about 30 more quotes to that. Um, and then it'll print the quote to the e-ink and then just go to deep sleep mode for 24 hours. Um, and that ball switch is not hooked up to the code in any way, it's just hardwired to the reset of the ESP32. And so during this, this is kind of an oversimplification of the quote, uh, code. I had real trouble centering the text on the e-ink display, found that really hard to do, and also line wrapping when, when a quote is too long to print on a single line. And uh, I had no, I have no CAD abilities, so I couldn't design the enclosure. And so this is when I approached Poyu for help with the code and then also the enclosure. Uh, and we started collaborating on the project, he, and he ended up making kind of his own version of it. And so this is where he'll talk about his. All right. Um, yeah, so I was presented with a problem, and I think of different ways to kind of make my own, like, I like Andrew's design. It's a little bit too thick for my taste, so I made a slimmer version, and I also got rid of the solar panel, even though I like the idea. Um, but well, I'll talk into uh, I'll talk into like how the power consumption and stuff. Um, so th my goal with this is you can put your own quotes, so you're not limited to whatever you first program it to do. So it's custom quotes, configurable. It should be easy to use and self-explanatory, like it, it should be self-explanatory and you'll see why. It should last on a single charge, so you just kind of set it and forget it. Um, I also use the ESP32 S2. It's got a lower power capability. It has native USB support and it's very cheap. Uh, the battery management, I use a TP4054. That's like the battery charging IC and a max 1704X, that's the fuel gauge, so you know like how much power you have left. And then the e-ink is the same one that we've always used. Um, yeah, so the custom quote, how do you get quotes on it? So the ESP32 S2, it's native, it has native USB-C support, so you plug it in, I have a program, so it mounts as a USB drive, it reads a text file, um, and when you don't have a file, like a valid file available, this is an icon it shows. When you first open it, there's a readme file which tells you instructions on how the file should be formatted. It's basically just a new line after a new line, after like quotes. Um, so that's the self-explanatory part. Um, and when it refreshes, it'll try to remember the last line because obviously you don't want two quotes to show at the same time. And it utilizes it utilizes this flash partition in the chip to store the files. And the bonus to this is you can have a USB firmware upgrade. Like you just plug it in, you drag the firmware.bin file and it will automatically upgrade the firmware if, if you want to do things to it. Um, yeah, so the problem that Andrew talked about, like wrapping text, basically these are the steps. You want to calculate the text bounds, which I'll explain what text bound is, and try to break the, the whole string into different lines. And then you calculate how um, big that bound is, and then you calculate like where it is, it should be centered. And then finally, you just draw it out. So what text bound is, basically, if you want to display like these two lines, the text bound is the red um, rectangle. So the X and Y of this is the text bound. Um, and how do you do line wrapping? If you imagine the black part is the display part, I separate um, the line by space, because, well, I mean, I thought about doing other languages, but if we want to do other languages, I have to incorporate like other font. And if you want to do like Chinese, Japanese, Korean, then the font is even crazier. So I'm just considering English right now. Um, basically, I split by space, and I just append the the word to like a like a memory space and then I check the length for for the the bound and then if it's not greater than the display I I append another word until the word gets too wide for the display then I drop it to the second line 
I mean, this sounds very simple because you use we use Word on the computer and it's it just works. But um, I have to manually do this on the microcontroller, and this is basically like the algorithm that um, this works. Um, so then, yeah, the power management. Um, well, I mentioned slow power, but like how low, right? So you, we need a way to measure the power consumption. And I found this um, device, it's called like a power profiler. Um, and I'll, I'll show a photo of this in action um, in a bit. But I, I incorporated a fuel gauge, like so it shows like how many percentage of the battery is left. I had put in a uh, 1200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, so you only need to charge it when it gets too low and it'll show you when it's too low. And in real world tests, I've I, during in one charge, it lasts for more than six months. I think I have some over there, like um, this device here. Like it's on like five percent left, but it's been five percent for like several weeks, and it's, it still runs every day. Um, so this is like the the measurement of 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 the device. So how I hook it up is I basically get rid of the battery, plug this device. So this device will act as the battery, and then it will just tell you the consumption. Um, these spikes over here is when the refresh is happening. And I have it highlighted. So if you look at the bottom right, um, it says 30 milliamp average. So over that length of time, which is about 3.8 seconds where it finished refreshing and everything, um, it will consume 30 amp. And after it's done, which I measured this part, that averages to 277 microamp. Um, and if you, you can, you can kind of estimate how long it'll take, but nothing beats a real world test. So like the six month, more than six months is what I've been trying, it's what I've been getting so far. Um, and this, this is the ESP32 S2 in deep sleep mode. So, and I also designed a new enclosure because um, I want it to be smaller and like thinner and have it look um, a little bit less clunkier than the previous design. Um, so I, I modeled this in um, Fusion 360. Uh, I want the hardware to be easy to source. Like I want the minimum bomb possible. So like, I think there's like uh, six screws in there and two piece 3D print. Um, yeah, so for the 3D print, I use a uh, material. So normally it's called PLA, but this one is from Protopasta. They make one where they have they mix with like carbon fiber composites, so it looks really nice, and it's got like a matte finish instead of the normal layer line. It kind of hides the layer line. Um, it's two parts, and I'll, I'll show you guys this after the, t the talk. And then I made a custom PCB because I needed. I basically used three modules, and I have it open. I have one open. I made a custom PCB that you that um, kind of sandwiches all the components. So the PCB will handle um, the battery charger, um, the fuel gauge, and it will connect the display module and also the ESP32 module. Why I do this instead of just having it all on a single chip, uh, all on a single board, is because this was the lowest cost for the volume that I'm trying to make, which is like 100. Because um, if I want to do, on a single board, if I order, say, 100 